Hi, I'm Paul Brody. Welcome to my shop. Unseen, but in behind the camera is Mitch. It's a vital role and we thank him very much. Last week, we built a, a wheel and there were some comments and one person said, you can't check the dish using a swing arm. That's no good. So I wrote back and I said, well, it depends on the swing arm. If it's really well made, you could, but I've got a dishing tool here. So why don't we actually use a proper dishing tool and check the wheel right now? I have not checked it. This is a dishing tool I bought about eight years ago. I was on a website called Cycle Exceive and they were featuring this this dishing tool. It's very nicely made. It's even got a serial number. I got number, I got number two because I was one of the first ones to order it. And it's made out of bamboo and some of the features are this here on a bicycle wheel, you don't have to take off the quick release because it goes under the quick release. And then I show this to people and I say, well, what are these for? See these? These are made out of stainless steel and they fit right in there. They hold in there. Well, what these are for, if you look here, there's a piece of steel. You don't have to take off the tire to look at the dish and check it. It's very, very close. It, seem, it seems to be touching, seems to be touching the rim but it's also also on the tire so so there we go I press that in so that's right against the spacer so we'll flip this round well that looks pretty good to me let's just do the other side once again just to just to do a double check I know on the swing arm it was out very, very tiny. No, that's that's about as good as it gets, so happy with that. Let's look at our project for today. Our project for today is a backing plate. This is the it's a 250, it's an XL 250, and I've got a 350 hub, but I don't like this. And where the brake arm goes, it's in the wrong place. I made up a drawing, so you can see here, when the backing plate's like that, I want the brake arm to be right here, so it's about there. This weighs 772 grams, and I have a piece of metal that weighs over 5,000 grams. So there's a lot of chips to be made today. And I've done some drawings. I started out making notes, and then I made a drawing of the inside. There's a lot of dimensions that really have to be taken care of, otherwise it might not fit too well. And then I made a sketch. I don't know what the final shape's going to look like. Here's the axle, here's the pivot points for the shoes, and then that's where the torque stay goes. So there's going to be some kind of a webbing here, but whether it's mostly on the outside or what, I don't know. And I'd like to have an air scoop in here. So I've made a little note there to put an air scoop in there. It's not really, not really necessary, but shoe would look cool. On the backing plate, you see how this works? These are the shoes, the brake shoes, and the brake shoes fit into here like that. Well, if I was to have this piece here as a part of this, I'd be starting with a piece that's even thicker, maybe close to three inches thick. So that's just a waste of metal. So what I did yesterday, I made up this. I took some cold rolled. First of all, I, I machined that down to half an inch, well, 499. And then I reamed a hole. So I knew the center of the hole and I locked that into the plate. And that's when I used the boring bar to cut these because these have to be an exact size. I experimented on a piece of metal first so that it, it's a pretty good fit there. Because that's what happens when the brake moves. 
and then I cut these to make it lighter. So we're gonna lay this out. I got some machinist blue. So I'm gonna put some blue on here. We're gonna lay out this opposite mirror because we're working on the back, not the front. And this shows the front. It's not super dark, but we'll put some marks on here anyway. I got part of a, a, a combination set here. And what this does is to find the center, not the center, the, uh, it divides a circle. That's what I'm trying to say. So when I put this like this against the edge, it goes right through the middle. So that's what I want to do. So there we go. So if I look at my drawing now, I want to go in 3.3, just in case you're interested in how we lay things out. So I'll use my vernier. Actually, it's not a vernier. It's a digital caliper and I'll set it to 3.3. And then I'll set this. So now my right angle is 3.3. So if I put that like that, that's where the axle goes. So you can see how the axle is off center. That's the center. That's where the axle goes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna punch that with a center punch. Good. So this is going to be the outside of the backing plate. And that'll get hacksawed later. So it's going to be 65 degrees, but this is the inside of the backing plate. So it's going to be 65 degrees over that side. And there's 65 right there. So I go through the center like that. And that's my center line. This is the crucial line. Like that. So this is, this has to be opposite that. And that looks right because this is 65 degrees from here to here. On the backing plate, what's really crucial is the distance from the axle out to the hole. And it's going to be the same. I'm making an assumption that it's the same spacing from here to here. Now, I measured the center of the hole out to here. Actually, what I did, I measured I measured from here to here, and then I measured from here to here. And so I take those two measurements and I add them up, and then I divide by two, and that gives me center to center. So what I came up with, I'll show you right here. Okay, there's my two numbers, and I added it up, I divide by two. It's 2.202. Now, Everything made by the Japanese is always metric. So I, I looked up what was metric and that was slightly under 56 millimeters. 56 millimeters is 2.205. So I was out by 3,000. I'm pretty sure it's going to be 56. So that's the measurement that we have to drill holes here. That's where the brake arm goes. That piece fits in there. And then this piece fits here. So we're going to go to the mill now and we're going to drill those three holes. This is, here's the drawing. And, and then we also have to lower the heights a little bit. 56 thou here, 117 thou there. And then we also have to lower this height as well to make everything because you can see how these heights aren't all the same. So a little bit of tricky, but we'll do it. We're going to make a lot of chips today. So what I'm doing is I'm lining up the ruler, a stainless steel ruler with that line I scribed. And then what I need to do is to line up the ruler with the 
with the keyways because I need to have it straight. This is an eyeball thing. Guess I should drill this hole here. This this hole is gonna. That's for the Torx thing. So let me just mark that out quickly. Okay, that's the hole for the Torx day. That's actually, uh, I don't need it that big. This is a better size. I've never made a backing plate ever, so this is this is new for me. So that's kind of cool. The first time. There we go. I'm looking here, and I need to go under the surface because so, I'm I'm going to make that reamed hole right now. So I need to go down a little over five eighths. I like to put tools away clean. Not every machinist does that. Some of them just throw stuff and then later on when they need it, that's when they clean it. That's not my style. And that's it. So this piece that's where that goes. That's a pretty nice fit. You gotta make the axle hole. So that's gonna be 790. And then while I'm at it, I'm gonna drill that hole as well. Doesn't look like a very big hole, but it's a 20 millimeter axle. There's an axle. Let's see what we got. Oh, look at that. There's a little bit of slot, but that's that's pretty normal to have a little bit of slot because you need play. Otherwise, it's too hard to put things together. So there we go. That's good. What we're doing now is, you see there's a space there, 565. We have to take down that surface there, 565 thou. That's a little over half an inch. I've zeroed the Z, because the, the, then we know how far to come down. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is to take a, well, I can, no, I can still use the same tool and I'll just do the same thing and I'll take it down and then that, that's gonna look nice there. So we'll do the same, same thing. So I'm just going to put an 8mm hole through and then I can always make it bigger later. Now we have to scribe a line between this circle and that circle. It's called tangent. Yeah, so that's, that's our final shape on the outside. We'll see how long this takes to hack, so it could be, I don't know. Over 15 minutes. I'm hoping between 15 minutes and half an hour. What do you think, Mitch? What's your, what's your best guess? 20 seconds in video time. 20 seconds. No, that's, not, that's not the real world. I'm sorry.
15 minutes. That's it. 15 minutes. That's a good band saw. That worked pretty good. Maybe I'll 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 trim this down a bit. That I don't have to take that off on the lathe. And I've got a bit of milling to do here. I'll turn it in the lathe. So, next step. So now we have to machine out this section here so that it fits over the hub. So we'll put some oil on here and do a little bit of a little bit of turning. And let's see what we got. It's supposed to be <clears throat> 6.590 and we're at 6.585 so it's actually five thou smaller than what it's supposed to be which doesn't really make a lot of difference it's on the outside and there's one little bit which which didn't clean up so actually that has to come down a little bit so I think we're down to size how about that eh I just stopped at the right time <laughs> five thou we can we can take off metal up to up to these holes. So we're at uh, 5.7, 5 isn't that what I said? Wow, I just happened to stop there. That's interesting. I just, I stopped right there and we got 10,000 more to come off. That's it. Lady, lady luck is shining today. So, take off one more, one more small cut of five thou, that's it. It's a parting tool, so... Not sure quite how well it'll work, but that's the only tool I've got that's going to fit in that spot right there, so... We'll give it a go. All it is 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 clearance. It's nothing nothing crucial. Let's see if it fits onto the hub now. That'll be a good test. Oh, well, that's not deep enough, so that's a problem. This will be the moment of truth to see if it fits. It feels it kind of feels like it's resting on this, but I don't know. Oh yeah, it's not going down all the way. 
So this here is 5.7. So that's the same size. See, same size. Okay, see, I, I think I might know what's going on. See here how this is much lower? That's, that's quite a bit lower. And you see over here, you see how there's a, a shoulder that comes out there? If I measure that, I put the vernier right on there and I hold the vernier right there, it doesn't go down. I think it could be, I think this, if I put that back in the lathe, and I machine this this out down to that surface there. Why don't we try that? I think that could be holding it up. Okay, let's try again. No, I can see a, I can see quite a space between this and the bearing. So I got this the same size as this, but if you look here, there's a step, right? See how it steps down? See if I do that now, And that goes inside. So I think what I have to do is the machine off right from here and here. Cross my fingers that this is what it was. Okay, so I don't hear it, I don't hear it scraping anywhere and it seems to be turning on the bearings, so I think that's a pretty good sign. And is it down as far as the other one goes? That's, you, you can see that how far down it is, the space. Yeah, we'll just put on the other backing plate because it should be really, really close. Yeah, it's the same, isn't it? I'm looking at my drawing. Here's the swing arm, there's the torque stay, and this is the mounting point. It, it's two and a half inches behind the, the uh, axle center line, axle of the, of the swing arm, not the axle of the bike. So if I make a mark here, two and a half inches, and I put a piece of plate on here, Yeah, it's still sticking out. It's... No, maybe it does want to be on the other side, just just like it is. Let me let me see. If it is, then it can just stay right there. Okay, that's. I think that's the best thing to do. Cause see how if I mount it on the inside there, which would be the inside of here. It, it arrives basically in the center. So I can put a nice little mount right here and that can bolt on right there. So I think we're gonna leave that, that where it is. And we're gonna make this a little bit larger here. And then we're gonna put a radius. When it comes around here, we're gonna use one of those little, little radius tools in the lathe. And, so this will be radius into this flat here. And we might take a little, a few thou off this, just so it's a nice finish. I 
looks okay. It's not, it's an interrupted cut. It's large, so on this lathe, that's okay. What's the next stage? I guess we can make a bushing. I found some bronze. It's already, it's pre-drilled. That's what it comes like, solid. And it's almost the right size, so I have to take a few thou off. Then I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll cut it, face it to the right length, and then I'll, I'll bore it out for the, for the cam. That's what it's called, the cam. It's a telescoping gauge. You lock it, you put it over center, you pull it out. <laughs> it doesn't want to come out. Go back over center, measure. It should be about 750. Okay, so it's 751. So if I make it <clears throat> 751 and a half, how about that? Oh, look at that. that. That's amazing that it's the right size already. That's amazing. Okay, I'm going to put a little, a little chamfer on here and then figure out the... I can't believe it's just the right size, just like that. Bit of a bit of a press fit here. That's at least the thou press fit. Okay, I need to put a little something in there so that it goes all the way down. Got a washer. Well, that's a good fit. That's not coming loose. I kind of doubt if this is going to go in there smoothly because that was that was too much of a press fit but we'll see oh not bad so it goes in there okay so it needs a little bit of a hone but not bad i could always i could hold this in the lathe and i could polish this a little bit too so anyway that's good thank you for watching obviously making a backing plate is quite a bit of work we're going to do part two next week thank you very much for watching and mitch and i like coffee if you buy us a coffee be great see you next week take care stay safe